Amir in Birmingham, UK, pronouncing it the way I uh, I know you folk, you Brummies prefer, as opposed to Birmingham, as as we have here in the US. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm really good, thank you. Can you both hear me okay? I hear you great. Yeah. Thanks for waiting through that, by the way. No, my, my pleasure. And um, yeah, I mean, in the first instance, I just wanted to say that I'm absolutely thrilled to be on the station and to simultaneously very excited and nervous to be talking to, to yourself, Matt, directly. Um, <laughs> You'll get over it. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll pass. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just maybe delving straight into it, I wanted to present a case as to why I feel atheism, atheism is irrational. And hopefully I can summarize it in a, in a couple of minutes. And um, feel free to interject at any point if there's anything that needs clarifying. But I, I, I Amir, to... what I'd, I, before you get started, and I won't make you defend it yet because I know that you're mostly about to defend more of a deistic concept. I want to know yeah. whether we're talking to a pure deist or a, a person who uses a deistic defense as the foundation for a different religion. So if you can, if you can just indulge me, Amir, after you get past, let's say we agreed that you are right and atheism is irrational and we get to the same deistic position. Have you gone beyond yeah. that to a different religious proposition? Are you, does your, is your deism foundational to your Christian theism, for example, or are you Muslim? Is there a proposition that oh, you've okay. since found um, most? Yeah. Yeah. Worth clarifying then. So I, 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 I believe in God, but I don't fall under any religious denomination. Okay, so you don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus or anything? No. What about and a personal in, you know, God? Is this a God that you communicate with through listening, who has a personal care about you individually or humanity as a whole? Any any uh, characteristics you mind sharing? Partially. As in, I don't believe there can be direct communication with God, but I do believe that he cares and loves us. Okay. Uh, maybe that part there becomes a little bit nuanced. Um, yeah. Let's hear, so let's hear your mathematical defense. It, it says irrational based on a mathematical model and law of averages of your, yeah. what's I think going to be a proposition of deism, and then we'll talk about the jump from deism on. Okay, sounds good. I mean, I'm, I inevitably just wanted to make a point about intelligence in that I feel it is um, difficult to, to have a healthy dialogue about a belief in God or, or discussions about atheism without accounting for intelligence and expertise in debating and what i mean by that is you know you're both excellent debaters and you're just great ambassadors of atheism and if i were to debate god with either of you head to head then i know i'm going to be up for a losing battle in fact i'm going to get obliterated um and, and with respect, the flattery I, is it, nice it's not helping at all uh just <laughs> just to the argument i i, I assure you Abir, i already like you plenty because you have one of my favorite accents Thank you. I mean, this is actually pivotal to the point though, that I'm about to make. And, you know, with respect, I can admit I'm not as intelligent or well-versed on these topics um, as yourselves. Um, oh, I really however, just need you to get to the case. Just, yeah, just okay, go for and it. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just getting to now. So, you know, just with that point, and this is at the crux of it, there are many intelligent people who believe in God representing different faiths, who I'm sure could go head-to-head -head with you guys on all of these topics and make compelling cases. And we have to be honest in the same way I'm that not. I was and say that some of these, just, just get, if I can finish the point and then I will let you see whatever you want to disband it. But just, you know, some of these individuals are also more intelligent than yourself. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they are right, but they are more intelligent nonetheless. So when we recognize Perfectly there are more intelligent people than ourselves who exist, who represent different viewpoints and have thoroughly delved into the topic of God and remain convinced, convinced of his existence, then surely we have to remain open-minded to the fact that we could just be wrong. Not on the basis of there being more intelligent people, on the basis of there being better information. Um, first of all, how do you decide no, on what is no, 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 no. You don't get to say that we're, you don't even get to suggest that we're not open-minded to the possibility that we're wrong. We are both absolutely constantly open to the possibility that we are wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what skepticism is. 
So if your case is we should be open to the possibility that we're wrong, congratulations, you caught up to me for the last 20 years. I'm always open-minded to the possibility that I'm wrong. Okay. Maybe then that exists more on a spectrum in what I mean, in that you are convinced that there is no compelling evidence for God, which is why you maintain atheism. However, when there are other people who are completely convinced in the existence of God and however, you know, many different manifestations. That it's irrelevant. Be, they... Fred, uh, Armin, it is irrelevant. Uh, Amir, sorry. Uh, it is irrelevant whether or not more people are convinced or whether or not they are generically, generally more smarter or more smarter in some area. You said that there are plenty of people uh, or that there are people who are very smart who would prevent a very compelling case for God. I don't think that's true. I've watched all of the available best defenders of God, including some incredibly smart people, and none of them have presented a compelling case. So this notion that you have, that there's a bunch of smart people who believe in God, we already recognize that's irrelevant because there are also a bunch of smart people who don't believe in God. Should we then have everybody take an IQ test and say whoever gets the highest score, their position on God is correct? No, we all know that's that's flawed. No, no, um, that, that would because, be because, I mean, because, wouldn't it therefore entail that ag agnosticism would be therefore the best? Amir, you gotta um, let you gotta let Matt I mean, finish. Amir, once again, agnosticism and atheism are not mutually exclusive. I'm an agnostic atheist, depending on your definitions of knowledge. It's, it's like you've never even looked into this stuff because you're suggesting that we're closed to the idea that we could be wrong when we're not. You're suggesting that we aren't consistent with agnostic views when we fucking are. It's yeah. like, have you ever paid any attention to anything that we've said before you decide to come in and suggest that you know what it is we think? Okay. Um, can, can I just, to that point, if I was to just give an analogy, like, you know, imagine if you were back in school. And imagine that okay. nerd. Actually, Amir, I think in, no. I think no, you can't give an analogy because oh, it, I want to hear it. it. it actually, okay, I, never mind. I'm going to let you, but I will tell you, it annoys me, and it's probably a f character flaw of mine, when I am capable of grasping a concept, and then a person offers a metaphor for a concept I've already grasped. We haven't missed the concept, so to provide a metaphor is to say... I think you're too stupid. So now I need to explain to you uh, this in terms of if teddy bears were trying to find honey or whatever I'm, the analogy is going to be. But Matt I'm wants to hear to the analogy. It. I'm, so, I'm sorry if it came a lot. I'm, I'm trying to approach it in a, in a different way because, look, at the end of the day, all of us, and some of us have taken a lot more time to delve into the topic, but we've all been exposed to the same information. And very intelligent people on both sides no, of the spectrum have arrived at different conclusions. And so what I'm trying to do is underpin the mechanism as to how highly intelligent people can arrive at different conclusions. And first, that, that dialogue there is what I'm, I'm trying to explore in a bit more detail. Sure. Is, yeah, and that's you know, a you know, fucking useless that is a fucking useless waste of time because now you're talking about why people disagree. Here's the thing, Amir. Is there good evidence for any god? I, I believe so, and I can, I can present the case. I, cool. Let's do that. Give, want, me, give, me, give me the best piece of evidence for God, but before you do that, since you got me primed to listen to it, what the fuck were you going to say when you said, imagine you're back in school? <laughs> okay, I just to finish that. So, you know, imagine that nerd in your class who excelled at all metrics of intelligence, you know, always got straight A's, was super quick-witted, etc. And imagine a, you know, a scenario where the teacher has given you homework, and you answer the bunch of questions and before you go to submit the homework you glance over at what the nerd has produced and you know that he's answered a couple of questions like questions differently would your confidence be shattered in that scenario even if you were confident at the time of answering them it's a terrible metaphor the so the questions that you learn and take quizzes on in school is one of the questions is belief in god reasonable because that's a very different sort of question than what's two plus two. Yeah, the, the problem I had with your question, Amir, is in many of those classes, I'm not trying to brag, I was the smart person that people were consulting and trying to get tutored by, but I believed in Mormonism. So somehow these kids understood, asked Jimmy about math and science, 
but don't ask him about God because he sucks yep. on that topic. Amir. And I was in the same boat. Yeah. I say, Amir, can we agree that Mormonism is obviously untrue? Yeah. Does it shake your belief in what you just said confidently? When I reveal to you, this is 100% a fact that the prophet, the president of Mormonism is a renowned heart surgeon. Yeah. And yet you still feel very confident Mormonism isn't true, right? Or did that shake your your claim that it's not true? And, I mean, look, if I came across... Do, please answer doing, the question. Please answer my question. He's not going to. Sorry, what, what was the question? Just direct. Well, one more time. Here. Does it change your confidence in your position yeah. that Mormonism is obviously untrue when you found out that the president is a renowned heart surgeon? Yeah. It did change your confidence. You became less no, confident. No, it didn't. No, no. Okay, exactly. So now we can put the intelligence thing aside because they aren't relevant. Just because somebody who is smart holds a really stupid thing to be true doesn't affect whether or not you should be confident that it's true or untrue. So we can yeah, put that I, to I bed. I feel like the analogy could be maybe slightly adjusted, but uh, okay, we can maybe foundationally. Let's go with your best e best evidence, like Matt asked you for. Let's do that. Okay, um, I think I'm I'm a big uh, kind of advocate of the contingency argument, in that I believe that there's one aspect of reality that is just a brute fact and cannot be explained by anything else. Otherwise, being an infinite regression, and I believe that brute fact, that thing that underlies everything is something that needs to have intentionality and something with intentionality can best be explained by, you know, a, a creator type figure, something that, because when we talk about space and time, matter and energy, I think the, the origins of space, time, matter and energy cannot be contained within itself. It needs to be contained beyond that. So something that then becomes timeless and immaterial. And I think that is, with intentionality can then be defined as a god. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, but again, I know, I know the rebuttal that's going to. No, 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 you don't know the rebuttal. I tell you what, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you want, I will type up my rebuttal, my, my the first sentence of my rebuttal, and I will give you thirty seconds to say as many sentences as you want, and if any of them uh, matches the sentence of my rebuttal, I'll give you a hundred dollars. You still think you know what my fucking rebuttal is? Um, I, I could expect what it might be. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. I would, Hang on. I let me, would, I, me, give him a second to resign resign this. I need to resign this chess game that I was playing while you were blabbering on about contingency. But here, let me, oh, let me okay. jot down my, I, I my well. thing. We should have a game sometime. I think Katie still has to play Matt in chess at some point, too. Yep. Okay, I'm I have my like sentence. Sentence, go. Like, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm thinking that your statement might be along the lines of um, why invoke something more to explain the brute fact of reality that is, that would be God. Why can't it just be sufficiently explained within naturalism itself? Why have to invoke something beyond that? Along those lines, possibly. Nope. Okay. Um, my, the, the sentence that I wrote down, the sentence that I wrote down is this, you didn't present evidence, you just said what you found compelling. I okay. asked for, I asked if there was evidence for God, and you said yes, and then you didn't present any evidence, you presented a philosophical argument tied to contingency, with about 10 different things in there that you did not expound on and did not provide any evidence for. I can't provide evidence in the sense of scientific because that's the whole point about God. It, it's well, not scientific. Then, it's then, then the answer should have been no, there's not good evidence for God. Yeah, but then you are then stating that the only form of valid evidence is scientific evidence. And now I'm no, not sure. You are. I'm not. You are. I didn't mention scientific evidence. You decided when I said that you didn't provide evidence, you said I can't provide scientific evidence. And that was you declaring what you should consider to be good evidence. I was willing to accept any evidence, but it needs to be sufficient to demonstrate that belief is warranted. I didn't say scientific. You did. Okay, then I apologize for that misunderstanding. I, I... 
I've seen that you were seeking something scientific yeah, there. Amir, I have um, two things for only, you. Amir, yeah. I've got two things for you quickly. One, uh, it sounded like, I could be wrong, but that foundational to the thing you found compelling began with a concept of um, infinite regression, uh, which is... It's fine that you didn't know this. I didn't know this until recently. There is nothing in physics that actually makes infinite regression impossible, it turns out. We just had a physicist on who explained this to all of us, uh, Dr. Aaron Adair, if you want to go back and take a look at it. Secondly, would you? I, the next thing is a question. Would you There's like nothing. to withdraw a word that you used in your screening, and maybe it was misheard, but you specifically said atheism is irrational, based on a mathematical model and law of averages, but are also now acknowledging that you do not have evidence to refute an atheist position. Therefore, I don't know how you could use the word irrational there. Um, irrational in the sense that, and that was the point about the intelligence that we were talking about and then taking a law of averages, very similar to the fact that, you know, these quiz shows where they guess, you know, get you to guess the number of balls in a jar and the best answer is to take the average of what everyone else has said. That's the approach that I would take with this, in that atheism is, a, is an absolute position. It is denouncing the existence of a God based on a lack of compelling no, evidence. Sir. That, no, sir. no, sir. No, sir. It's fucking not. Atheism is the position Sorry, me, of not accepting. Can I clarify this? Again, I, 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 with all due respect, Matt, I am not an expert debater like yourself, so if I'm not using with, the correct with word... With due respect, you keep saying and declaring what our position is when you're wrong. So atheism is not... Again, my, my understanding of atheism, just as a baseline definition, is um, the re rejecting God on a lack of sufficient evidence. No, 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 no. See, this is so atheism is the position of not accepting the claim that a God exists. Why you re why you reject it? Why you don't accept it? Why you ex don't accept it? Why you reject it? Could be based on a lack of evidence. It could be because you don't like God. Could be because you were molested by a priest. Your reason for getting to atheism is irrelevant to what atheism is. This is what happens when, when you get something wrong and we try to correct it, then you try to fix it and you make it more fucking wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to concede the point. Well, why, not, why not ask us? Why is it that why is it that theists seem to call in and want to tell us what our position is, what it should be, and how it's irrational? Because they've created a straw man version of it instead of doing what they're supposed to do, which is defend their own fucking position. I you mean, this, have signed. You, I'm my, still my fucking talking. I'm still fucking talking. You have managed to say that you're going to defend a deistic proposition. And then also said that you're convinced of something that is not a fun that is not a part of a deistic proposition, and that is a God who loves. A deistic God is undetectable, devoid of interaction, and has no personality trait that you could possibly identify. And yet you have somehow convinced yourself that there must be, because of contingency or whatever reason, a deistic God and that he loves. <laughs> And you and you will pretend that I'm the one that's irrational because I don't believe the shit that you're saying. Um, there are a lot of ground has been covered. I do apologize for the interjection. I don't want it to, to have that sort of reaction. Um, so again, apologies. I'll, I'll look out for those interjections. I just look, to, to, to the point, um, there, there's some lines of thought that I pursue uh, that I can say something with a degree of certainty just based on an intuition as well and what i mean by that is we can all collectively agree right now that we are not dreaming this is not a dream we can't run any scientific test to prove that we're not dreaming but our collective intuition can lead us to the conclusion that we are not in a dream right now and by the way amir is... we could still be in a dream right now we could yeah. Absolutely. Like this, is, this is this is so frustrating when we talk to religious people and we start getting like, start finally getting to the point, And then they always re, uh, 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 not always, they so often retreat to this very concept of, well, we don't even know if we exist. So let's not talk about the rationality of my position where obviously everybody here is always already working on the foundation that we exist. If there's a thing we might have to presuppose, it would only be that because there's, not, there's nothing else you can do. It's it. 
let's talk about the rationality of your position where we don't need to go over the fact that we all agree we exist. We're good. Me Meanwhile, there is a scientific test we can do to show that I'm not dreaming right now. The only way that that's true is if you are confusing dreaming, which has a particular definition within the reality we experience, with solipsism. There's nothing we can do to demonstrate whether or not solipsism is true at all. But I can definitely do a test to see if I'm dreaming right now. So you went from the dreaming definition within reality, which we can test for, you extrapolated that to make it co-equal to solipsism, which we can't test for, and committed an equivocation fallacy between the two of them. That's I can cool. absolutely do a test now to find out whether or not I'm dreaming. I can't do a test to show whether or not the reality, I can't do a test whether or not to show that the reality I experience is real. Those are two different things. Well, what experiment would that be out of interest? We can hook me up to an MRI and get independent verification from other people. Couldn't that be emulated in a dream? Um, this only to the extent that the dream that I'm experiencing is shared by other people. And so you can verify whether or not you're sharing that with other people by having questions that only one of those people can answer. Uh, what you're what you're doing here, and yes, it could be that this is a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. But we can't show that the reality we experience is real. But we can explore within the reality we experience what is real within that. And when I say we can't show that the reality we experience is real, I mean the ultimate true reality. Like I can't show I'm not a brain in a vat. There's nothing that would show that I'm not a brain in a vat. But even if I'm a brain in a vat. There's within this reality a ground set of rules that define whether or not within this reality I'm dreaming or not. Okay. So do you okay. believe presently, Amir, that within this reality, mm -hmm. do you presently hold the position that it is irrational to be an atheist? Um, uh, look, with the way that you have both taking this conversation I'm, I'm, I'm actually you know possibly looking to revoke my position i need Good. to let me fix your metaphor from before with the game show and the counting the beans or whatever thing was in the jar earlier you said that the best thing to do would be to take the average of all of them first of all that could or couldn't be but that isn't the position of atheism uh, or the position, uh, uh, the opposing position would be if you want an atheist, a metaphorical atheist there, the metaphorical atheist doesn't say all of you are wrong or one of you is right or any of those things. It is saying if there's five of them, you guess there was 100, you guess 150, 200, 250, 300. I am not accepting that any of you are correct. That's the atheist position yeah. completely. I'm not saying because they might count. Yeah. And then when they count it, they go, oh, there is 200. The person who guessed 200 was correct. And when that happens, I will become not an atheist, not because the person guessed correctly, but because we counted the goddamn jelly beans. Yeah, that's what an atheist. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's just, that's the yeah, fix to your metaphor. Beans. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I just wanted to then clarify something in that I just think that having a position on the extreme ends of the spectrum would become irrational. That also is therefore true for being a absolute theist. No I one is, in your metaphor, no one is taking in the extreme there. position that with a jar in front of them full of candy, that there is no jar of candy. No one's taking that position. But by the way, in your God proposition, the jar of candy hasn't shown up. So if anything, it's, hey, trust us. We have a panel of thousands of men who are speaking on behalf of a jar of candy. Trust us. There's a jar of candy in the other room. Trust us. And now start guessing how many pieces of candy are in it. With no frame of reference or any ability to investigate, yeah. is it a big jar? Is it a little jar? Are we talking in the yeah. thousands, this the millions, or the dozens? The, Present the, the jar of the, candy. Yeah, I, I, the example that Amir came Sorry, up with is good. Continue. And the example that Amir came up with is right. It's it's about the wisdom of crowds. And so, if you had one of those uh, jars of gumballs, and you had a sufficiently large group of people guess at the number that are in there, and that's that's a key thing. 
if you have five people guess, you don't have any any reason to think that you're that the average of their guess is close. You have to have a very large number of people to where the wisdom of the masses averages and gets closer exactly. to the actual number. And and the reason for that exactly. is and the reason for that is that while individuals could be wildly inaccurate, on the whole, we have a reasonably good understanding of reality. But as Jimmy points out, this isn't about count a number of, of gumballs, which by the way, we can count to verify. Um, this is about what yeah. is beyond our ability to investigate. And so the wisdom of the crowd yeah. can't exist for things that we don't have the ability to investigate. If you want to take the wisdom of the crowd for the number of gumballs or how long we've been having this conversation um, or any number of things that is actually verifiable where, 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 the inf where the reason people have for reaching their conclusion is based on empirical evidence and understanding of reality, that's fine. But you don't get to extend that and apply it to things that supposedly exist outside of space-time, things that are in, in a deistic model, a deistic God is an undetectable God that does not intervene in reality in any detectable way, which means there cannot be any wisdom of the crowd on whether or not such a being exists. Because in order to make that determination, yeah. you would need data to, to, to bolster each individual's position. And the fact that they're smart yeah. on things that you can verify doesn't mean they know anything at all about something you can't verify. Deists are literally claiming to have detected the undetectable, and it's embarrassing to be called irrational by a deist. Yeah, I mean, just to that point, though, Matt, and it, it, it's, it's a completely valid point. And when you talk about not having the ability to investigate, you see, different deists or theists can conjure up a much better rebuttal than what I'm about to say, because it is their and ask them to call. They are like yourself, expert debaters. And thus, Amir, we're talking are, to you. you know, equally. I know. What difference does that make to what I say? You see, when you're talking to me, my. When you're talking to me, my, my, my beliefs and my opinions are shaped by the people who I consider to be experts on the topic. And that includes yourselves. The number of times that I've been like, wow, yeah, you guys have just made back-to-back -back amazing points. That continues to influence the way that I think. Equally, when I see someone like William Lane Craig, and you know, there's been countless occasions where I feel that William Lane Craig has had the hand on renowned atheists like Sam Harris, for example. But equally, I can say... With open mindedness, I've seen Sam, uh, uh, that I've seen William Lane Craig get owned by, let's say, Sean Carroll. I've seen those debates. So in that in that side, I've seen the atheists. So you know, Amir, what do you debates. use outside? Because uh, you're, you're kind of you're kind of rambling now. What do you use outside? If you're saying there are debates with two different positions, and sometimes the a position A wins, and sometimes position B wins, and they are exclusive positions, they can't both be right. They could both be wrong. So you can't just go with who impresses you the most. What is the mechanism that you use to figure out what is correct that is outside of who is the most impressive or inspirational or well-spoken debater? What is your individual thing you're doing yeah. to figure out the actual answer yeah, to the question? Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think maybe that we all have shared collective values in that we would, you know, value things like logic, consistency, rationality at the forefront of what makes a compelling argument. But then, you know, how we subjectively approach things like rationality, logic, which we can all agree become the foundations of a compelling argument, we may then interpret that differently. And that's when I feel things like accepting differently, because these are people that are absolutely convinced of the positions that they maintain. And they're you know, fucking smart people with all due respect to them, including yourselves. And so how, so, how do we go about oh navigating God. ourselves in a field of so many varying opinions without just saying the law of average is possibly the best way to, to consider something like this? We do it by critical see, thinking and a skeptical evaluation of evidence. We do it by having good standards of epistemology. We do it by pointing out that all of those really smart people who are extremely convinced that a God exists do not support their God belief in the same way or with the same quality or quantity of evidence that they would for any other claim that they believe. 
that they are all reaching for something that goes beyond the normal. Oh, we can't justify this with science. Well, that's too fucking bad. Oh, what, what else can we justify it with? It's not a fault of rational epistemology that gods don't fucking get, uh, uh, conform to that standard. If there's a god, any god, deistic or otherwise, is it possible for it to present evidence for its existence in a way that is compatible with the most rigorous scientific standards of exploring the universe? Is that possible? Great. Um, no, but that's the point, and then this is what. So, we're so you really think in that you think God is not you, scientific? You think it's impossible for any extant God to present scientific evidence for its ex own existence? Correct. I don't think that I don't think God can ever be scientific. How, how did you? How did you it determine? Can... How did you determine that it's impossible for God? to provide scientific evidence of its existence. Wh which God are we, have you investigated to determine its capabilities in order to say God can't demonstrate any scientific evidence for its existence? Maybe let's use the word creative because I feel the word God is right now having too many religious connotations, which, you know, collectively we, we all agree. I, I, I don't we care don't what you call it. I don't care what, it doesn't matter what you call it. This is the, this is the point, Amir, is whatever you call it you're saying there's something out there that is the creator of the universe but it is incapable of providing scientific evidence for its existence what method did you use to determine that the creator of the universe is barred from presenting scientific evidence for its own existence because the the origins of space time and matter cannot be in my opinion, explained by themselves. And first, the hypothesis that we would be testing, i.e. God, would have to be a timeless and immaterial hypothesis. And there's no experiment that we can devise to test something that exists outside of the experiment. It then becomes, there, you know, a philosophical to present. What I asked, so I, I could agree with everything you said, but what I asked was, what methodology did you use to determine that the creator of the universe is prohibited from presenting scientific evidence of its own existence? You, because here, understanding the before question, you, before you jump in, your answer, no, no, stop. Your answer was that the origins of space and time, we don't know what the origins of space and time are. So already you start off talking about something we don't have the ability to explore or investigate. You say you don't think they can be explained by themselves, which is irrelevant to the question you're being asked. I didn't ask you about the origin of space and time um, and the origin of space and time aren't relevant to what the creator of space and time can do. It doesn't show it shows if there was a creator of space time, oh, you okay, yeah. know, <laughs> my God, let me finish. If there was a creator of space and time, the existence of space and time will show you what it can do. It doesn't show you what it can't do. And yet you have determined that the creator of space and time cannot provide scientific evidence for itself. What method did you use to reach that conclusion? Um, I would say that if, if the creator wanted to be something that could be scientifically explored, then that would become quite obvious. Then we could point our telescopes to the sky or our microscopes to the ground and just see evidence of God. And we'll be waving us and be like, yeah, you found me. The fact that he has not revealed himself in any obvious way means that he is not something that is. He, 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 I hope that's a little bit more. So what you're now saying relevant to, to is that right. you've reached the conclusion that the creator of the universe is incapable of presenting scientific evidence for its existence because it hasn't yet done so. I mean, I, I guess the word incapable, he, he is capable if he wanted to be, you know. Okay, so now we have to sure back that is, Now we have to get back up and erase the last five or six minutes to where I said, can God, can the creator of the universe prevent scientific, present scientific evidence of its existence? And now you're going to say yes? Can he? I, yes, he could. Yeah. I, I, and by the way, this is this is just me now being able to process the question. 
properly. It's not well, a, well, a, a jump in my view. So I'm just processing it. Okay. So how, what method did you use to reach the conclusion that the creator of the universe can, in fact, demonstrate its existence scientifically? If a creator exists and therefore has the capacity to do anything, you know, if he, if the creator can create a universe that can then host life, then it would follow that the, the unit that the creator could also present himself if he wanted to be scientific. No, no, it does not follow so from that. Be... Not only, not only doesn't follow from that, but previously, until I hand walked you down to the point where it reached a contradiction, you were asserting the opposite. So now, what you're saying I is that it is. Me. Now, what you're saying is that it is impossible for a being who created space and time to be unable to present scientific evidence for his existence. You're saying that's no longer possible. How did you rule out the possibility I that something think... you absolutely are? The, the point that I'm getting to here is that you're reaching a conclusion about what the creator can or can't do, and you have no evidence and no methodology to make that determination about what it can and can't do. If you want to say, if the cre as you did just a second ago, that the creator of space-time can do anything, well, that's not true. What if the creator of space-time is only capable of creating space and time and then ceases to exist? Now, it is the case that it's impossible for them to present scientific evidence to their existence because they no longer exist. And you can't tell whether or not they continue to exist or even if they existed to begin with. What if the creator of space and time can do some things within space and time, but can't provide scientific evidence of existence. Now, your first answer was right. What if this creator space time can, in fact, provide scientific evidence, but has not yet done so? Or what if he's done so, but we got it wrong? You have a number of different possible scenarios there. What methodology okay. should we use to tell which of those scenarios is likely to be correct? I, I feel like the response that I'm going to give is going to get bitch slapped across the face because I don't think I have at the crux of this still understood what you're saying. And I do apologize for that. Like with the uttermost sincerity, I admit, yes, you, you've helped me for the last power, power, five minutes and I haven't completely understood the point. But I will just make this point to you and I hopefully, hopefully this will answer it in that if a creator exists, then that creator would need to have unfathomable amount of power and also be able to uh, exercise free will and as a result of having unfathomable power and free will he can do anything and everything if he wants to present himself so that he can be discovered scientifically he can do that but he has chosen not to because he has free will so those okay. are the two so, attributes or characteristics now, that now, I depend to a god free will full power so now I you are you suggesting, might. sorry, God, now you're saying that if there is a creator, which is the very thing we're trying to prove, which means every funding that follows it is conditioned upon that, um, which means nothing that follows upon that is going to be relevant to, to demonstrating that it actually exists, which is the whole thing we're trying to do. But if a creator exists, you says it had, you, you said it must have unfathomable power. Well, Unfathomable just means un unknowable or something you can't comprehend. And yet you seem to be suggesting that you can comprehend it. it. Why would it need to have unfathomable power? Why wouldn't it be enough for it to just have just enough power to create space time? I mean, I mean, it could have, let's just say, quote unquote, enough power just to create space time. But that just doesn't seem intellectually satisfying. It doesn't. Oh. So now, See, now we're going, we're going on me, to what like you find me. intellectually satisfying. Well, how, we, I'm sorry, Amir, Correct. but we don't get to same. use what Amir finds intellectually satisfying as a criteria for exploring the creator of the universe. I think that's actually the key to this whole thing, honestly. I, can I just say, the point about intellectual satisf uh, satisf uh, 
satisfaction, sorry. What about intellectual satisfaction? Let's make this your last point because we're about to cross the 40-minute mark. We have other calls, including Theus waiting. So let's do, clearly you have a lot of uh, listening that you need to do, that you need to uh, go back and listen to the call and adjust. But honestly, I feel like it took us 40 minutes to get to you an admission of just like, yeah, but that doesn't feel like a sexy enough answer to me. But it didn't, because when he presented his Can contingency argument and, and, and anticipated and anticipated what my rebuttal was going to be, my actual rebuttal was that you didn't present evidence. You just presented what you found personally compelling. So we're yeah. actually right back where we were 20 minutes ago. And now it's your turn, Amir. Say whatever you want to say. Thank you. I mean, I just think the, the, the point about unfathomable power versus just enough power to create the universe can be inevitably brought down to intellectual uh, satisfaction in the very same way that we can say with a very high degree of probability putting aside the experiments that matt proposed earlier that we are not dreaming right now we can't say with 100 certainty we can say with like 99 percent conviction and it is an intellectual satisfying answer we cannot verify it in empirical ways and so i would these are not comparable jesus christ i'm I'm surprised you would still try to use a metaphor because even within the realm of the reality that we are agreeing that we're in any perception of our certainty that we're not dreaming that there isn't some solipsistic version of using the word dream instead we can talk about what our we're talking about something that's purely ex uh, an experience-based thing of what i know in this reality that we're in is that a dream is like this And I know that based on having dreams in the past and that I'm not currently experiencing that thing, which is usually a dream of the past. However, I also enter into dreams where I'm convinced I'm not dreaming and think about, am I dreaming and and determine that I'm not? So it's, this is a, this is a, I don't know why you are trying new metaphors when the old ones have failed and these ones are bad, Amir. Amir, I I think we just end with, this was fun, kind of, well. And and call back after you've re-listened really to the call and sort of you, so I... adjust the position, adjust the metaphors, and maybe rely on them less because you keep trying to throw saving dice. Uh, you keep trying to do a saving throw with your metaphors, and they're not working. Okay. No, but point taken. And really, thank you both for your time. And Matt, Thanks, please man. don't hate me. I have nothing but respect. I don't. For you I don't so hate you. you. I hate you. I don't hate okay. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. But but if you think about nothing else, you are claiming to be able to tell the difference between two scenarios while demonstrating no mechanism or method by which anyone could tell the difference between those two scenarios. That's what deists do all the time. And that's what you've done at almost every point of this conversation. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Amir. Yep. Hey, it's Jimmy Snow here. I'm the executive producer on the line with a fun fact. Did you know 100% of the hosts of this channel enjoy eating? It's true. And if you would like to help contribute to their ongoing addiction, you can do so by going over to Patreon or becoming a channel member. There are show-specific, host-specific tiers. Those are awesome. But also, you can leave a super thanks with a special little highlighted comment. You can like, comment, and subscribe. All of those will help fill our, our, our widow widow bellies. By the way, check out some of these, this content over here. <laughs> Algorithm, what next?